Good morning, my name is Carl Kemp. I'm the Executive Director of Public Affairs and Marketing here at Long Beach City College. It's a pleasure to see all of you and we appreciate you coming out. My duty today is very simple and that is to introduce our illustrious MCs. Our MCs for today will be Dr. No Noel Corral and Dr. Lee Douglas. Give it up for our Vice Presidents. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Lee Douglas, and I'm the Vice President of Academic Affairs. Thank you. Yeah. Your check is in the mail. Dr. Corral and I have the honor of serving as your Masters of Ceremonies for this truly special event. Before we start our speaking program, I would like to start with our land acknowledgement. Long Beach City College acknowledges our presence on the traditional ancestral land of the Gabrielino Tongva people. This land remains unceded territory. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory. Long Beach City College honors and respects the Gabrielino Tongva ancestors and their connection to this land. I'd like to now bring up Dr. Noel Corral. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. And thank all of you for joining us today, this morning. It's an exciting day for us all. Uh, our board of trustees, our superintendent president, Dr. Mike Munoz, all of my colleagues and executive leadership, our faculty, our staff, uh, and especially our students who will benefit most from this wonderful new facility. Just take a look at that. This is an enormous and fantastic site and service and instructional facility that we're about to embark on. Before we welcome our first speaker, allow me to introduce the members of the Board of Trustees and the other elected officials and dignitaries who are here to participate in this celebration. To announce uh, our own Long Beach Community College uh, District Board of Trustees, our president, Erlinda Chico. Our vice president, Vivian Malaulu. <laughs> Trustee, Uduak Joentuk. <laughs> Trustee, Sunny Zia. Oh. Trustee, Dr. Virginia Baxter. And student trustee, Alex Hernandez. Thank you all. From the city of Long Beach, our city auditor, uh, Laura Dowd. Council member, Megan Kerr. Council member, Al Austin. Long Beach Unified School District, President, Diana Craighead. Bellflower Unified School District, Brad, Brad Critchfield. Where's Brad? There he is. We have representatives with us today from the offices of state and local officials. First, Genesis Hara from Congressman Robert Garcia's office. Silvana Pau, State Senator Lena Gonzalez's office. David Ochoa and Emily Rodriguez from State Senator Tom Umberg's office. Clayton Hurd from Assemblymember jo Josh Lowenthal's office. Jeff Williams, uh, Montserrat Pineda from Long Beach uh, Mayor Rex Richardson's office. Long Beach Community College District Personnel Commission, uh, Chair Robin Gordon-Peterson. <laughs> Long Beach Community College District Citizens Oversight Committee, Alan Gafford and Summer Temple. And with that, I'll invite uh, Dr. Douglas back to the podium. Thank you. And so we were able to introduce a lot of folks just now, but if we missed anyone, if you would please give your card to the person at the table so that we can be sure to acknowledge you formally as well. Our first speaker this morning is Board President Herlinda Chico. President Chico is a product of the California Community College System and as a trustee has prioritized community collaboration 
and engagement through programs and events that open our campuses to the broader community. She is the first person of color to be elected to this seat and the first Mexican-American woman elected to the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees. Please join me in welcoming Board President Herlinda Chico. Good morning. This is an exciting day, isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, thank you, Dr. Douglas, and, and thank you to our guests for joining us today to participate in this ribbon-cutting ceremony to officially open this incredible building. You know, the opening of uh, Building M is not just a celebration of a new facility, uh, but it's a testament uh, to our commitment to provide students with the latest technology and tools to empower their learning. The new Building M replaces the old M and N buildings, which were constructed in 1935, long time ago. Uh, the two buildings were simply not meeting our educational and facility needs to teach this modern day and in this modern day and age. Um, but this new building puts our students and college in the best position to be successful uh, and in the future to, to provide a lot of success. And let me tell you a little bit more about how special this project was. Uh, this is the first state funded design build project in California. So let me say that again. First state-funded design-build project in California. Uh, this saved both time and money throughout the construction process. Uh, in a design-build project, the architectural design and the construction services are provided by a single entity, which streamlines the process and fosters collaboration between the design and construction teams. This method is different than the traditional design-bid-build approach, where the design and construction processes are contracted separately. So, in fact, this project was was recently recognized by the Construction Management Association of America in recognition of the quality and the speed of the construction. Uh, so it, th this building has set the standard for future design build projects statewide, uh, demonstrating how innovation, efficiency, and sustainability can come together to, cr to truly create an exceptional building. And let's not forget the skilled labor of our hardworking men and women who help build this. Please give everybody a round of applause. <clears throat> you know, this project was also funded by Measure E and Measure uh, LB bonds, which were overwhelmingly approved by voters in the communities that we serve. Uh, these funds have been the source for thoughtful renovation and modernization of both the Liberal Arts Campus and Pacific Coast Campus. I believe it's also amazing that our LBCC team kept this project going during the COVID-19 pandemic the entire time, uh, which maintained much needed construction jobs and prepared our campus for our ultimate return. That also includes our bond management team, uh, the Cordoba Corporation, who work diligently with the design and construction professionals. Please give them a round of applause. They're so wonderful. Uh, many people played vital roles in our journey to upgrade our college to ensure state-of-the-art facilities for our students, faculty, and community. But the biggest thank you goes to the residents who serve, who we serve in Avalon, Lakewood, Long Beach and Signal Hill who voted to approve and fund our bond initiatives. This is what you have brought to our campus. We simply could not have done that without your ongoing support. So on behalf of my uh, board colleagues, we are forever grateful to the communities we serve for their continuous support of our students through the modernization of our buildings. Your belief and support of our efforts are key components to prepare our students for the future in our ever evolving world. Thank you. Now I'm honored to introduce our next speaker, our dynamic, visionary, rock star superintendent president, Dr. Mike Munoz. Thank you, President Chico, and good morning, everyone. Is this not a beautiful day? It feels like we're back in California, right, after this crazy winter. I think yesterday was the first time in several weeks I did not have to use my heater at night, so it's 
progress. Um, we are, so again, I want to start off by thanking Board President Chico and greet everyone. We are very fortunate here at Long Beach City College to have an innovative, responsive, forward-looking Board of Trustees that guides and embraces the future goals of our college. Will you join me again in giving another round of applause for our trustees? They're all here with us today, so thank you again. So thank you for being here today for our ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, Building M is the new home for several academic departments, including language arts, English as a second language, world languages, reading, computer office studies, and we're thrilled that the Disabled Student Program Services, as well as the writing, reading, reading and Writing Success Center have been relocated here in these brand new spaces, and you can see the signage. So it's visibility, very important off the courtyard for our students to be able to identify and access these very important services. Building M was designed and built with a focus on sustainability and achieved LEED Gold certification for its environmental friendly features. Additionally, Building M is the first building on LBCC's campuses to feature the cutting edge access control and lockdown safety system, providing an extra layer of security for students and staff. This building really is built for our students to learn in today's new normal teaching environment. For example, all of these classrooms have high quality audio and cameras that will allow faculty to conduct hybrid courses. Our faculty can give an in-person lecture while hosting online courses or have virtual guests um, lecturers during a class in person. The same high quality equipment can also be found in the student study huddle spaces. Now students can gather and meet on campus while their classmates are meeting with them virtually from home. Isn't that pretty innovative? Um, you know, I can tell you as a, as a former community college stu student who was also raising a young child at the same time, it was often difficult for me to be able to attend study sessions and meet with my in-class group mates. So to have this technology, I think, is a game changer for students who might be caring for children or, you know, be working several hours and trying to figure out how to get back and forth. So we're really excited about that feature. And as we continue to make LBCC more welcoming and inclusive of all of our students, this building is fully accessible to our disabled students. Building M's exceptional design, construction, and sustainability have earned its numerous accolades and awards. And I want to give a special shout out to Dr. Chip West and Mr. Walter Johnson and our entire facilities team for their assistance in bringing this project to life. Can we give them a big roaring round of applause? And if you're from facilities, construction, Walter, team, Chip, just wave so we can all acknowledge you. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of HPI Architecture, CW Driver Construction, and of the, and the Cordoba Corporation for demonstrating what excellence and partnership should look like. Let's give them a round of applause as well. It's thrilling to be able to provide facilities like these for our students, faculty, and staff. Our sincere thanks goes to the communities we serve who have been with us all the way as LBCC continues to improve and grow, providing educational success for all students. Thank you all for being here, and I'd like to turn it back to Dr. Douglas. Thank you so much, Dr. Munoz. I'm very excited for you to meet our next speaker, Professor Samira Habash is Chair of Communication Studies, now at home here in the M Building. She is passionate about her discipline and finds fulfillment in observing the growth and development of student communication skills. She will share exactly how the teaching and learning, how the whole experience is enhanced by these new facilities. Please welcome my friend, Dr. Samira Habash. Good morning, everybody. Morning. morning. So today is a very exciting day, as mentioned before, for Long Beach City College students, faculty, staff, administrators, board members, and the Long Beach community. So one of my favorite childhood movies growing up is The Wizard of Oz. And I never forget the scene when Dorothy while holding her dog Toto very closely, she tapped the heels of her ruby red slippers three times, closed her eyes, and repeated the heartwarming phrase, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. During my 25-year tenure at Long Beach City College, 
due to a series of unanticipated events, the Communication Studies Department has been searching for a place to call home. In the late 1990s, the D building was home until the college received state money to renovate it with the stipulation that the D building would only house math and science classrooms. And so like the tornado that struck Dorothy's Kansas home, we were uprooted from the D building and moved into the O trailers. Some of you might still remember the O trailers that used to be situated in the parking lot between the auditorium and the art building and surrounded by tons of bunnies. <laughs> remember the bunnies? They were so cute. We were told that we would only be in the O trailers for two years. Well, you know how it goes. Two years became four, four years became eight, and approximately 15 years later, after the O trailers were declared condemned, the Communication Studies Department was relocated to the newly built T building, which we often refer to as the Taj Mahal. <laughs> and although beautiful and new, the T building was designed to suit the needs of the School of Social Sciences. And finally, after 25 years, the Communication Studies Department has a home here in the new M building. And yay. And it was a long journey, but like the scarecrow, lion, and tin man, we made some great friends along the way. And the M building isn't just a building made up of four walls and a roof, it's so much more. It's a magical place where students come to learn, grow, connect, and involve into the best versions of themselves. The M building is where students take communication studies courses to overcome their fears of public speaking, learn to work effectively in groups and teams, brush up on their debate skills, develop their interpersonal and leadership skills, and so much more. The M building is also where students take world language courses to acquire beautiful new languages like Spanish, French, German, Chinese, Italian, and Japanese. It's where students enroll in computer and office studies courses to learn about computers and computer software like Microsoft Word, Excel, Outlook, and Access. It's also where students enroll in reading and teaching prep courses to become more proficient, analytical, and powerful readers and to prepare for a career as a K-12 educator. Fun fact, did you know that the M building is the first LBCC building to be, to be completely torn down and rebuilt? Other LBCC buildings like J and P were renovated and buildings like T, V, and W were newly added buildings to Long Beach City College. However, the M building is the first building that was completely torn down alongside with the N building and rebuilt from the ground up. And while many of us may have nostalgic associations with the old M and N buildings, I don't think anyone is going to miss that distinct scent of mildew that lingered in the old N building. In fact, when VP Douglas's office was housed there, one day I built up the courage to ask him how he was able to tolerate that smell for so long. And he looked perplexed by the questions and he politely, he's always polite, politely responded, I don't really smell it, Samira. To which I responded, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, Lee. And we both laughed. I'm thrilled that the M building is the new home to the communication studies, world languages, ESL, COSA, reading teacher prep departments. Like the yellow brick road, the path to the M building was windy and long, but the beautiful structure coupled with the state of the art technology is our very own Emerald City. And although the M building may not be the place in which the scarecrow acquired a brain or the tin man gets his heart and the lion obtains courage, it's the place where students come to enhance their reading, writing, language, computer, and, and communication skills. It's a place that we can all be proud of. It's home.
And so now that we're here, I too am going to close my eyes and tap my heels and repeat the heartwarming phrase, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. Thank you, Dr. Habash. Uh, another round of applause, please. As a great representative of our college, of the department, and one of the programs that's housed here uh, in the new M building. And you're right, as many of us think of LBCC as our home, there is no place like home. Our next speaker is Rachel Ng. Uh, Rachel is a current student at Long Beach City College. And I remember first meeting uh, Rachel as we navigated together the uh, space in the A building. So it's really exciting for me to have this experience uh, for her and for her to speak about the new student services located in the building M. Uh, please help me welcome Rachel Ng to the podium. And good morning. Isn't it a nice morning? And I hope you guys are doing very well. And it's a glorious morning to celebrate an even glorious building and uh, a nice place to be. Um, I am a blind, totally blind, disabled student. Um, and yes, I agree that this building is quite accessible, which is very much a relief as mentioned the a building was where the like was where he kind of found me and i was in there because of the <laughs> entire dsps program and everything else and you know we still sometimes have to go in there I'm just kidding <laughs> and so um well whereas the a building has a little courtyard and can be a little confusing, if you will. You have to navigate through that center, walk around the long way. <laughs> or <laughs> or you somehow, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you somehow fly across it, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I found that it was a little confusing. I mean, I eventually learned my way around the long way, but who wants to go that way? <laughs> but So I find that the structure of the M building to be very accessible and, oh, look, the signs on the doors are all correct, and <laughs> that's a bonus. <laughs> and it's very welcoming and accommodating to um, blind students. I've always thought, as a, as a person who's done a lot of speaking and advocacy and uh, and stuff like that and representing, I've always said that blind people are just people and should definitely be included, and that our um, disabled civil rights is very important. And this building is a good example of accommodation. I also find that um, people come in and out all the time, so it's a good place for uh, disabled student services. It's also, um, I like, I think, lockers on the testing stuff. Isn't it nice not to have stuff stolen? I mean, I haven't had stuff stolen before, but at least it's not a cubbies. It's lockers where you can bring a lock. <laughs> and so <laughs> I find that to be great and the lab is bigger and has more computers and the the place is nicer and I find it to be a joy to be in this building and uh, it's wonderful to be included in a building. I also find that I have no trouble finding any of the places. I very quickly dropped my cane because I can navigate around it and understand where the bathrooms are and all of the spaces. If you, somebody kind of hinted they were all symmetrical, all the floors. And I was like, oh, I think I can figure this out then. <laughs> so I'm very happy to say this is a wonderful building and it, is quite accessible and great on the people who were sponsoring and great on the people who were building it. I think it's a really good thing that there is inclusive, in, in being included 
I mean, inclusivity. <laughs> and, uh, and so um, I am, I and I'm sure most disabled students are very appreciative of that. Thank you so much for having me up here. Right here, Rachel, on your left. Thank you, Rachel. Let's give it up once again for Rachel Ng. Thank you so much for those inspirational words, Rachel. We're so happy to have you with us today. We have a number of elected officials and representatives who would like to do a quick presentation to the college. May I ask uh, Board President Chico and Dr. Munoz to help receive these presentations. So I'm gonna call the presenters in order, and if you would come in that order, and we will allow you a time at the microphone. First, we have Long Beach Council Member Megan Kerr. Council Member Kerr, yes, let's give it up, <laughs> is an LBCC alumna, and her district includes LBCC's Liberal Arts Campus. Council Member Kerr. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. Welcome to the 5th District. Um, I am a proud LBCC alum who transferred here to Cal Poly Pomona and then came back working for the Transfer Center to recruit more folks from Long Beach City College to Cal Poly Pomona. So it's an honor to stand here in front of the new building. Um, that is an accessible, beautiful place for learning. I come from the school board and we know that where we learn matters and Long Beach City College was so diligent in understanding what their students need, um, what their future students need, and built a building that will serve them long into the future. So congratulations. We are so thrilled to represent you here in the 5th District and wish you much success and look forward to partnering to bring more folks in to see your incredible space. Thank you, Council Member Kerr. Next, we have Gen Genesis Hada from Congressman Robert Garcia's office. Let's welcome her. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm honored to be here on behalf of Congressman Robert Garcia, who's currently fighting the good fight in Washington, DC. Um, as many of you may know, he was an educator before he held any sort of elected office, and so he continues to be a champion for education now at a national level. And it's very imperative that the facilities match and are up to par with the programs and resources and services that you already offer here at LBCC. And congratulations, because LBCC continues to be ahead of the curve when it comes to that. So I just wanna congratulate Dr. Munoz, President Chico, and the rest of the LBCC team here, and thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you so much, Genesis. I, I, it might be a little known fact, but uh, Congressman Garcia was a part-time faculty member in our communication studies department. Uh, so we're very proud of him. Next, we have David Ochoa from State Senator Tom Umberg's office. Hi, everybody. I'm David Ochoa from the office of State Senator Tom Umberg. I just want to congratulate all of you here at this campus and all of you on this momentous occasion, you know, with all these resources from the Disabled Student Center, the Success Center, the Communications Department, finally having a, you know, a good home for our community. I think a lot of students are gonna benefit and just congratulations. Thank you again to Senator Umberg's office. 
And next we have Clayton Hurd from State Assembly Member Josh Lowenthal's office. Hi everyone, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here on behalf of Assembly Member Josh Lowenthal. And I just wanna echo so many of the amazing things um, that have been uh, dedicated here to truly contribute to student success. And there's so many things, yes, it's great faculty, yes, it's great leadership from the board and the president, but it's also the environmental factors like, are there good bathrooms? Is there a good drinking fountain? Is your classroom not too small or too hot? Is your chair comfortable? All those things also really, really contribute to uh, student success here. And I know those things are all happening in this building as well. So again, congratulations from uh, Assembly Member Josh Lowenthal. And yeah, congratulations. Thank you. That is all the presentations that I have on the list. I want to make sure we don't miss anyone. Is there any, are there any other presentations? If not, I would like to now welcome back Dr. Corral, who's going to give some closing remarks. Thank you all. Uh, these um, will certainly be proudly displayed um, with us. Many people and organizations have had a hand in this M Building success story, this award-winning uh, Building M success story. And we are prepared, and as we prepare to close this ceremony, please join me in recognizing them. I know it's gonna be hard. There's many to thank. Uh, so please hold your applause until the end if possible. Thank you. First, there are a number of key people who played vital roles and worked very hard to make this multidisciplinary facility a reality. And so, to begin, on behalf of the college, I would like to thank our Citizens Oversight Committee uh, for their diligent advisory role in our bond management program, the amazing facilities team who helped oversee the project, and the incredible ITS team, Information Technology Services, uh, who implemented all of the technology that you'll see inside the building once you go on your tours. And leading these teams, uh, members is our fearless leader in the area, Dr. Raymond Chip West, uh, Vice President of Administration and Business Services. And all the members of the bond management team, especially Abdul, uh, Con Conbargi, Russell Jones, David Navarro, and our uh, Cordoba Corporation's uh, leadership led by George Pla that oversees and manages all our Measure E and LB projects. Uh, and then there are those who designed and built this remarkable complex. HBI Architecture served as our architects. CW uh, Driver was our general contractor. And I'd also like to thank all the departments and staff, faculty that contributed uh, to the plans and the design of these uh, of the space uh, as well. Let's give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> Finally, join me in thanking those who helped make today's event possible. The planning of the event was led by the Office of Public Affairs and Marketing with the amazing assistance from event planning and filming services, operations, custodial and grounds, and the multimedia teams. So thank you all as well. Most importantly, we want to thank all of you for being here today as well. It's wonderful, it's wonderful to see so many people from the community attending today, former employees, former faculty members, staff um, that had a role in the vision, uh, and then those that are with us today that get to participate uh, and benefit from this facility. It's because of the strong support from our voters and taxpayers that this beautiful complex was made possible. So thank you again to the residents of the cities that we serve. That's Avalon, Lakewood, Long Beach, and Signal Hill for supporting our bond measures. This concludes our program at the podium, but I invite everyone to walk inside the Building M and open, uh, how, for our open house tour. Please note that there are some classes that are in session, uh, and you'll see signs telling you which ones are in session but there are classrooms and offices that you're more than welcome to explore that are not in session. And please enjoy the reception. Lastly, I would 
ask that our speakers, our board of trustees, our elected officials, our, our building M deans and directors, um, and our VPs to please accompany Stacy Toda to the ribbon cutting site for our photos to commemorate the day. Again, thank you all, appreciate it. watching, please visit www.lbcc.edu for more information and registration.